Ask anyone who has ever lived in a small town, and they'll most likely all tell you the same exact thing. The worst part isn't just being far away from the nearest city or distant from friends and family. It's the boredom that gets you. Having so little nearby gives you so few options for things to fill your time with. For some, they get used to it. As they grow old spending their life in the same tiny community, they either learn to make their own entertainment or just get used to the boredom, drowning it out by sitting and watching TV all day. But others, they just can't stand being bored, being stuck somewhere with nothing interesting to do, and ultimately, they can end up getting so sick of it that there's only one option, leave, pack their bags and hit the road, up sticks, and move to a new place far from the small town they were born in. Thing is, leaving isn't cheap. Moving to a new town, a big city, or even an entirely different state is a luxury that costs a pretty penny. Some might work and save their wages until they can realize that dream of moving away. But not everyone has that much patience. Some want to be free of the boredom as soon as they can. Maybe they might apply to be a contestant on a game show, chance it all, and try to win themselves a big cash prize. Sure, it's a hell of a gamble, and a loss might mean humiliation in front of everyone you know and more, but winning could be your ticket away from small town living. That might be easier said than done, though. Not only does someone looking to move away need to be picked as a contestant, they also need to play by the rules and actually win the game. But as if that wasn't enough, they also oh. have to live to tell about it. For as long as she could remember, Kat had always hated it here. Her hometown was tiny, too small to include more than the main street with few local stores, the one school that everyone who had ever lived there had studied at and little else of note. And as for things people could do for fun in the town, well, as you can probably imagine, the options were severely limited, especially for a group of teenagers like Kat and her friends. Most of the time, all that she and the others, Leo, Ricky, and Danny, could do to pass the time was sit in the back of Ricky's truck and park in the middle of town, watching people and waiting for something even mildly interesting to happen. Not that it ever did. The four of them had a name for the rest of the townsfolk, everyone that had lived there for their entire lives and never dared to venture anywhere else. Lifers, as in they were imprisoned, serving a life sentence in this small town, never to escape or move on or make something of themselves. As much as they liked to poke fun at those people, each of the group knew that every weekend they wasted just sitting around, the closer they were getting to one day become lifers themselves. We need to just go, Kat would say, trying to rally the other three into taking a spontaneous trip away as a group. Just load up the truck one day, pick a direction and drive, until we find somewhere. Ricky and Leo would nod their heads in agreement, mm -hmm. and Danny would talk for hours all about the places she might like to go to one day. But none of them ever actually made any plans to leave. Nobody knew where to start, until they heard rumors about an abandoned TV studio just outside of town. Apparently, according to Danny's older brother, it had been there for years, just sitting there completely empty. It wasn't just a small local studio either, one of the big national networks had owned it, and used to film there regularly back in the day. Why would someone set up a studio here of all places? Had been Leo's immediate response. Look at where we live, Kat replied. It's the literal middle of nowhere. The network must have got the land dirt cheap. The real question is, why don't we go and check it out? What for? Danny asked. Kat silently gestured at the cramped main street that surrounded them, the place that may as well have been the center of the known universe to the four teenage friends. Do you see anything else to do around here? Before long, the four of them were in agreement. Ricky's truck pulled up in front of their houses in the middle of the night, and under the cover of darkness, they drove out towards what was left of the TV studio. This was it. They were finally going somewhere beyond the choking, cramped confines of their tiny hometown. Although whether or not they'd all make it back was another matter. Here's a hard lesson for you kids. You can't fight for life you believe you deserve if you don't have a little skin in the game. With home a few miles in the rearview mirror, the truck stopped at a chain-link fence. A pair of signs were hanging from it, one welcoming them to the studio 
while the others simultaneously warned them to keep out, that this area was private property. Ignoring it, the four of them stepped out of the truck and started to climb the fence, throwing Leo's jacket over the top to avoid injury. Beyond the fence was a huge building, almost the size of a warehouse, with a door marked Studio Entrance that practically invited the intrepid teens to open it up and have a look inside. Each one of them carrying a torch in hand, the group walked up to the abandoned studio and gently pried open the door, trying not to make too much noise. Even though they knew the whole place was abandoned, they still didn't want to attract too much attention and get caught trespassing. The lights were all dead as Kat led the group, her hand being tightly squeezed by Danny next to her, the two boys behind. None of them had been sure what to expect. It wasn't exactly like anyone in the group had ever set foot inside a TV studio before, but they were met with a narrow, concrete-walled corridor, so underwhelming that it almost made it extraordinary in just how profoundly dull it was. Lifting his torch, Leo pointed out some lettering on the wall that read, To TMDG Set, with an arrow pointing the four friends further down the corridor. Naturally driven by her curiosity and need to be literally anywhere apart from her hometown, Kat followed the arrow's direction to another door. Pushing it open, she stepped inside, her torchlight immediately being blocked by a thick curtain. Brushing her hand against the material, she started looking for a parting, but before she could... Welcome, contestants! A voice boomed through the dark, coming from somewhere in the space beyond the curtain. Instantly, Danny screamed at the sound, almost wrenching Kat's arm off in sheer surprise. Before we begin, the voice continued. I need you all to tell me, are you ready? Kat shot a look back at Ricky, the friend furthest behind her, fumbling with the door they'd entered through. It was locked. He couldn't get it to budge. He turned and met Kat's gaze, shaking his head. Uh, sure, we're ready. Leo suddenly piped up, calling out to answer the voice. Before the rest of the group could turn and glare at him, the curtain around them lifted. So much bright light came pouring in that it practically dazed the four of them, each taking a moment to readjust. When her vision cleared, Kat saw they were standing in a huge soundstage, blinding spotlights pointing at her and her friends from somewhere above, with seating area big enough to seat their town's entire population. In that case, folks, you know what time it is! came the voice again, talking as if there was a live studio audience present, despite every chair being unoccupied. These four lucky challengers will go head to head, each one looking to take home the victory as well as a huge mystery prize, but only if they dare to take on the most dangerous game. There was a pause, as if this unseen announcer was waiting for a round of applause. Without warning, more lights came on, illuminating the space in front of the four very confused friends. Standing before them was what looked like part of an obstacle course, a series of four horizontal beams over an empty space. The glare of the light was so intense that even squinting, Kat couldn't tell what was beneath. It just looked like a void, nothing but total darkness, with four narrow beams bridging the gap between where they stood and another platform beyond. Well, what are you all standing around waiting for? The announcer declared, almost mocking the four teens, urging them on. <laughs> oh, the rules, of course. There was another awkward pause, like the voice was waiting for laughter. It's simple. The four of you will be competing to make it through each of our obstacles. Make it to the end before our timer hits zero, and you'll be tonight's big winner. But fall behind or cheat, and it's out with you. A huge digital countdown illuminated on one side of the soundstage, telling the group they only had ten minutes to play. Kat, Leo, Danny, and Ricky barely had a chance to question what was going on, exchanging quick, concerned looks before the announcer started urgently counting them down. Three, two, one! He cheered. Simultaneously, the four teenagers felt a presence looming behind them, like a figure was standing just out of view, blocking them from turning back. Carefully putting one foot in front of the other, Kat started shimmying along the beam in front of her trying to keep herself steady while also moving as fast as she could without falling. Out of the corner of her eye, she could also see Danny on the beam next to her, doing the same, but finding it a little easier to balance. Leo was having no problem at all, sidestepping with enough speed to keep him practically neck and neck with Kat. But Ricky was wobbling. Every foot he placed on the beam, he felt like it might give way beneath him. But it was just a game show, right? Sure, it shouldn't even really be running right now, but regardless of why or how, 
The worst that could happen was that he would fall. His next step missed the beam entirely and Ricky could feel himself toppling. Guys? He called out to his friends, trying to shift his weight onto his back leg. Kat, Danny, and Leo all froze and snapped their heads back to look at him, just in time to see Ricky wildly flailing his arms. His whole body toppled to one side, and he dropped off the beam with a loud scream. Not one of them saw him land, or even heard it for that matter. It was as if Ricky had just been swallowed up whole by the dark void beneath them, his scream getting more and more distant until it couldn't be heard anymore. Oh, tough break. Talk about falling at the first hurdle. The voice exclaimed, as if what had just happened was some kind of joke. So long, Ricky. We hardly knew you. Staying perfectly still, but clearly distressed, Danny called out Ricky's name. There was no answer. Kat just stared wide-eyed at the abyss below, only looking away as she heard Leo jump the last bit of his beam onto the platform. Danny, come on! Kat whispered to her friend, who looked back at her with tears streaming down her face. The pair of them carefully stepped further along their respective beams, trying to stop themselves from looking down or at the huge clock, seconds ticking away and putting them under even more undue pressure. Reaching the other side, Danny dropped to her knees, unable to hold back her sobbing. Kneeling down to comfort her, Kat looked up at the soundstage's bright lights for any sign of who was putting them through this. Bring Ricky back, she yelled. I'm sorry, the announcer replied, the game show bravado dropping from their voice. But you agreed to play. He'll be fine, Leo said. Bet you anything, he just screamed like that to scare us. Leo, you don't seriously believe that, Kat asked as she helped Danny stand up, wiping her friend's tears away. Is he dead? She sobbed. I, I don't know. Kat replied honestly. Of course he's not, Leo interjected. It's a sound stage. It's not like this place is dangerous. Then why was it abandoned? Danny asked. Leo didn't give her an answer, either because he was distracted by the lights coming up on the next part of the obstacle course, or because he didn't know and wouldn't admit it. Ahead of them was a long stretch of the course, forming a narrow, square-shaped walkway. Wide portions of the top side were dropping to the bottom in regular intervals, separating the tight space before opening it up again. Every time the segments lifted up, the three remaining contestants could see all the way to the other side of the walkway, where a new platform waited for them. With Danny under one arm, Kat looked at the far end of the walkway as it disappeared and reappeared behind the rising and falling segments. Then she noticed the timer, the seconds rapidly ticking down. But Leo had noticed it too, and turned to look at the two girls with a determined expression. Kat shook her head at him, but it was too late. With all his strength, Leo shoved Danny and Kat, both of them landing flat on their backs on the platform. He bolted towards the walkway as fast as he could, managing to dodge between each portion, pausing as they came down, only to run into the next one as they lifted back up. Helping Danny back to her feet, Kat ran after Leo. He already had a head start and would easily make it to the other side of the walkway before the girls. So instead, Kat held Danny close and took it slow methodically waiting for each segment to lift back up before they went further into the next safe zone. They were gaining on Leo, who was sprinting to the finish between the rise and fall of the ceiling's crushing weight. Kat watched him disappear behind each block, only to see his back when it came back up. He had made it to the platform opposite, panting but otherwise unscathed when she next lost sight of him. That's when the announcer spoke up again. Now, now, Leo, it said. That was hardly fair, was it? And we all know what happens when you break the rules. As the segment in front of her and Danny rose again, Kat caught sight of Leo just ahead, but it was what was standing behind him that stopped her in her tracks. Two huge figures, each like a shadow without anything casting it, towered over Leo. One of them reached forward and grabbed him, shrouding him in a cloak of darkness, and he was gone. Just like Ricky, he vanished. Kat had been so transfixed by what she had just witnessed that she didn't notice where she was standing, right under a block that was about to drop. Grabbing her hand again, Danny pulled her out of the path of the descending slab. Kat felt it brush against the back of her leg just as the pair of them made it out on the other end and onto the platform, the last two contestants. And then there were two! The announcer cheered, pausing again for a reaction from the empty room. We don't want to play this sick game anymore, Danny yelled. Well, you made it this far, the unseen host replied. Time for our third and final challenge, the final stretch of the course. Make it through this and you're home free. But fail or break the rules like Leo, and you'll be disqualified. Game over. It's okay, Danny, Kat whispered, 
Whatever's next, we'll get through it. Do you think the boys will come back if we do? Her friend asked. Just like Leo had, Kat didn't answer. The lights revealed the last stretch of the course. The final platform was overhead, a net climbing wall in front of them. It was a straight vertical ascent up with a wall behind the next and holes in its surface. Wasting no time, both Kat and Danny started climbing up the rungs of the thick rope, staying level with each other as they went higher. And then they're off. Look at them go, ladies and gentlemen. The announcer commented, still speaking as if to an audience. But it's not going to be so easy. The sharp sound of metal made both girls gasp as long spikes shot forward from the holes in the wall. The blades retracted, fortunately having missed Danny and Kat this time. What had started as a simple climb up had become something akin to a twisted game of whack-a-mole, with each of them trying to avoid staying in front of the holes in the wall for too long, dodging the spikes as they went in and out. They climbed higher and higher until, Cat! Danny screamed. She looked over her shoulder, only to notice she was in the lead. Below her, Danny was calling up to her with a fear-stricken expression. Her foot was caught in the rigging of the net, kicking and thrashing wildly to try and free it. Cat looked back up. She was almost at the platform, close enough to nearly reach it with her fingertips. But behind her, her friend was stuck, and with no idea when the spikes would come next shooting out of the wall. Cat threw herself over the edge of the platform and landed on her back, just as she heard the gut-wrenching sound of the spikes extending ring out. She was beside herself, tears streaming down her face. It wasn't uncommon for people to be overwhelmed to the point of tears at the end of a game show, but Cat wasn't crying with joy. We have a winner! The disembodied voice declared, barely audible to the surviving contestant as she wept. After she'd finished explaining what had happened to the police, a group of mysterious agents flocked to the soundstage to lock it down, stopping anyone else from getting close to it. They'd found a VHS tape in the mailbox at the front office of the studio. On it was a recording of a game show, a live audience cheering as one by one, Ricky, Leo, and Danny failed to complete the course. One of the SCP Foundation agents had come to interview Kat, asking her to recount the whole story all over again. Her account lined up perfectly with everything seen on the tape. Then the agent asked her what her prize had been after she won. A car, Kat replied. The four of us always wanted to leave home. Now go and check out SCP-2030 Laugh is Fun and SCP-1733 Season Opener for more televised tales of terror and chilling channels of chaos to keep you glued to the screen.